Yeah. So, tell, so tell us, tell us about this place. Yeah. Tell us, tell us your story. Well, yeah, I've been doing it now. You said 35 years. I've been doing it 45 years. Well, yeah. Um, we used to be in Pelican Village. Well, that's in the city. Real hub for the arts and crafts. Pelican Village. Um, it's called Pelican Craft Center now. But we left there. We've just gone 14 years. We came here to this beautiful location. And we like to say that we, are, we do it from beginning to end. So it's a full package. We go there. We, um, the only thing we don't do is literally mine the clay. The landowners, they would go and extract it and put it in sacks. Mm -hmm. We bring it up here and do all the processing ourselves. So when someone comes, they can actually see the processing going on. How it is milled, how it is strained, how it is laid up in the sun, in evaporation. Then they see how it is done on the wheel. They often do that. Then you get to see glazing and the kiln. Two kilns are going at the moment. And also, the good thing about it is that everything we do here, they are uniquely ours. The glazes are ours. Yeah, we don't buy from our ready made glazes, we manufacture our own glazes. And we use a lot of local ingredients as well. So we're always doing something new, something interesting. You know, always every year you get something new, new flavor coming out. You know, imagine you can um, say fried chicken, and then one day you get something tasting like KFC, and then another day you get something like McDonald's or something, and then something else, you know, some Chinese flavor, some Asian infusion, something. It's like that, you know, you keep doing, adding new flavors to it. So we, it's never a dull moment here. It's something I enjoy 100%. I'm glad it chose this and what it chose me. And I, I was going to say, do, do, yeah. do, you, do you feel that it chose you? Yeah, I think so, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not that I want to do. It's more than a job for me. It's, my, it's, it's like a hobby. A, it's a hobby as well, yeah, yeah. you know. And I would probably do it to my day and day, you know. Yeah. I can't imagine myself retiring. Because it's something to look forward to every day. Yeah. Every time we're going to fight the kill. Every time we open the kill, there's something new to see. There's always something to look forward to. Wake up, it's something beautiful. There are dumb days too. Yeah, you open the kill and it's oh, a disaster. <laughs> but more often than that, it's something good to look forward to. And it keeps us going. Yeah. You know? And I often say that here, we, we have a theme. Indigenous themes to the contemporary theme. Because even though we do some of the old traditional pieces, we've adapted them to fit into the modern record. And we do primarily functional things. Not just things that looks good, you know, on the, the shelf. We want to use every day. Yeah? Every day thing. Practically. Yeah. So once you buy a piece, you want to come up for another piece. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll be buying a piece. Don't so worry. All, 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 all <laughs> our customers, you know, um, once they come here, they usually come in next year. So we're constantly busy here. We're constantly busy here. Always. I say I'm never without an order. I guess that's the they really human touch we put into it. You know? When you come here you realize that it's not something you can buy from China. You know? It's something you need to buy. Many, many different varieties of fish here on the island as well. One would be pink sauce, given our geological makeup. But we have a lot of clip, different varieties. So I'm constantly exploring and redeveloping. Yeah. It's an ongoing process. We only just scratch the surface. Yeah, yeah. There's so much more to do. Yeah, I yeah. love that. I love that. I love what you're saying as well about how it's, it's your passion as well. Because um, I, I, rel I relate to that, you know, it's, it's like, I think it was, it was like my mum or dad said years ago, if you find something that you truly love doing, you'll never work a day in your life, you yeah. get a job like And it's true, and then when I hear people saying, you know, have you thought about your retirement plans for one day, and it's like, why, why would I want to retire? Really? Why, why would I want to retire? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's not an aspiration I have. Um, actually, the thought of retirement, I always say retirement will be something that would, would be forced on me due to ill health or something. It's not something I will willingly yeah, go into personally. First thing when I think of retirement, I think of... I have a son who's in the same matter of fact, he's in England. Yeah. Um, so when he returns, continues. I want to go out of country and work with other partners. I've always gone to these invitations, but I can't leave here, not for for a long period of time. I would like to go and spend time with other partners and teach a little bit, you know. Sometimes I'll be here, parts of the year, and come out here 
But they serve, like for instance, we have a festival here called the Whole Tongue Festival. Okay. I will never want to miss that. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing for me. Where you get the meat all by all cutting it every year. I totally enjoy it. Okay. You know? It's a real, it's a weekend of around um, three days, yeah. three, four days. And I, I look forward to that every year. So no matter where I go, I have to be here for that. You know? When's the Whole Tongue Festival? It's usually the third weekend in February. Okay. Well, we haven't had it for the past two years because of, because of COVID, yeah. but now we expect the back on track for next year. So that should be next year should be a real <laughs> an exciting year. Put it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And and where, where, where so if, you know if, if somebody wants to wants to purchase some of the um, some of the works that you've got, do they have to come here? Do you do you distribute elsewhere in Barbados? How yes. does it work? Um, do you invite people here? Yes, but all the. Um, Caribbean stores, yeah, yeah, best of other stores as well. And the other individuals, you know, this guy we're saying here, the um, Nicholas Abbey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the other individuals as well. So, the product is all over the world. Yeah. If you want, if you can't get here, you can get it from one here. I think people should come yeah. here and see, well, yes, we mean, but we see where see. it happens, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like when you buy your wine from the cellar door. And you're, you know, and you're in among, you know, where where it was crafted, and it, it's more meaningful for some reason. I know you could buy the same product or whatever, you know, in, in the airport or in the duty free, but it has more meaning when, you know, you can you can be here and sort of see the, the yeah. people who worked on it and the kiln and everything else. It's, it's, yeah. it's more meaningful. Like I remember going to Venice a long time ago and seeing the guys doing the glass. Yeah. That is special, you know. That is special. Sorry, guys, making that. So that makes it more, more um, meaningful. Yeah. yeah. So that's why our doors are always open. You can visit. You welcome that very much. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With that, I'm going to go inside and get something. So you have a look already. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. have a look again. Yeah. Yeah. Looking like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And after an hour turning it, about, um, about half my size of my face will be retained on the sieve. All the rest goes through. So we don't lose a lot. No? Yeah. So that slurry then put upside. Can you see it upside? Yes. Yeah. You put it in the bowels and let it settle for a couple of days. Then you siphon the water off and pour this thick slurry in the trays. And that stays for or so it becomes solid and thick. So this is what you get. Yeah. So these pieces are going to be picked up on the, on the tray. Okay, so this is the stuff that this is ready now too. Almost ready. So then it goes through the, the, the mill. This is another mill here called a pug mill. And that sort of needs it. Yeah. That's how it's doing it. Yeah. This is an extruder. So then they then stored in these other sacks here. So all these are ready. From this stage now you can work, you know. Yeah. 
but even though the mill would have needed somewhat, you still do some physical need in my hand. Careful, careful. So this final needed mixing it more thoroughly. Sometimes you get some air trapped inside yeah. or even lumps and you want to eliminate those. Making it one, one modulus mix, you know. Good. So because it was needed before in the middle, then it don't have to do much by hand. So this is ready. So from here you can go on to the dealer and make something. Right. Yeah. So let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So this is my view. We have a sponge in this sponge. We don't have any control of the No. I want to do brick. Yeah, I got it. Recently, I became very fond of, of this part. And every now and again, I go a new shape. And it looks simple, but I love it. I so love I've been doing something like that recently. So I'm going to make one of those. Okay, awesome. Let's make one of those. Centering is important. If it's not centered, you never make a point. Remember we're making that part, right? Yeah. How did you learn to do this? Uh, in the same Pelican village, there used to be um, a training center for all the arts. So I enrolled and mixed out here. How long did it take to be this good? <laughs> 45 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After um, five years, you could do this. Yeah. Um, I, as you wait, I'm doing it now. Yeah. You can make a piece like this though, after a year, but it's difficult to make two. Yeah. You know, someone orders a set, you're going to struggle. Yeah, what to replicate it? Yeah. And that's a problem now. Sometimes people tell me, oh, can I have six months? And the folks who would never accept an order like that because they can't. It's putting this, making this color as well. Oh, that. If it's not done a certain way, it dribbles. Right. Yeah. So you find you have a beautiful pot, and you pour in, it's all over the table. Yeah. Yeah, get it all. That's it. That's beautiful. Absolutely. So tomorrow, beautiful. I'll put it back on the wheel upside down. 
This is about three days old. Yeah. And this is almost totally dry. It's the same clay. Yeah. So we see the stages. These were done last night. Good. So they're drying. They're still drying. You see it's, it's a little light in here. It's a bit dry. And this is practically ready for the kiln. Yeah. So from there go into the kiln with the fire to just around a thousand and sixty degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that at that point they look like this. When they come out of that 1060 firing, this is the color. Oh okay. So that has not any color added to it. That is literally that clay. That's it. Interesting. So, raw cooked. Cooked. Yes. So at this stage, we apply the glaze. Okay. Yeah. But you know what? We're not let's put out some glaze on this now. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So what what is the glaze? Glaze is actually a glass. That's what it really is. A form of glass suspended in the water. So it's, I simplified it. It's a combination of a lot of different things. Um, silica mm -hmm. is the main um, component in glass. Well, of course, silica melts at a very high temperature. If you were to fire the box to get that temperature, you clear will that actually collapse. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring that front down. So we use boron, and there's some calcium involved as well in here. Um, so at the bottom, what we discovered a few wraps and it comes off so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. It seems a lot of time. Now, if the coating of glaze is too thick, even though you have the wax there, even though you clean the bottom off, it just runs as the glaze melts and fuses onto the shelf. Not just not only the pot is ruined, but the kiln shelf is ruined as well. So it's so important. So, what color would you expect this to fire? White. White. White is a good guess. Let's have a look over here. The pigment is cobalt here. Cobalt. In this case, cobalt carbonate is what we use. So this is. These came with the kiln um, late yesterday evening actually. These were fired yesterday. So on this one, you dip it in yeah. one glaze to there, and then the other glaze to there. That's right. You're smart. How now? Yeah, it probably be, you went in this one first. That way? Yeah. That's right. That way, and that's the other one. Yes, the other that's right. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Uh -huh. Beautiful. And in this case, I'm going to put the whole thing in white, yeah. and then we brushed it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I love these as well. Yeah, that's the traditional part. This is the ear. Yeah. The larger size. What is called a monkey pot to use for stone and one for the glaze is one that you have two pots. But this, this is the functional size. So it is, I've got a um, I accidentally started a collection of teapots. And um, so I've got them from Korea, China, Japan, I've got a whole load of little teapots and I'm just thinking that is just a lovely one for the collection. So I will I will Gladly take one of these. Remember, this is the monkey pot. This monkey pot. pot. Yeah. But you know, you, you do a pot, you do this in a pot, and I trim off this pot a little bit, make it easier for pouring. Yeah. And we call that the monkey teapot. Monkey teapot. Yeah. And this one has started a little bit ago. You can see the monster there. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you can actually go for this touch. Yeah, let's get it in. But this is cold. This is cold. 
Um, you can always stand here because it's so well insulated. Yeah. You can stand here e easy and do the adjustments. But it becomes too hot to touch as you go by. Yeah. So I have to make the adjustments. I'll turn up a bit. Color changing. It's, it'll be several hours, many hours before it gets ready to um, fully to the desired temperature. Yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Now, if you look in this one, now don't put the eye too close. That's what we want. You want to hear the see, see that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if you look there, you see something standing like this. Yep. Yeah, that's a cone. It's a parametric cone, and the cone is designed to melt at different temperatures. Ah. So when that cone goes over like that, I know I've reached my desired temperature. Look at it. How smart is that? Yeah, the guy who did it, I mean, very smart. There are other yeah. people doing this, but this is the standard. Yeah. Orton is the standard um, for all cones all over the world. When you use an Orton cone, you know for sure. Anyone identifies with that. You have cone one, cone two, cone three. Most partners don't say, I fired to 1100 degrees. Or, one, or, yeah. or zero 01 or zero 06 because in the 1060 we go to that zero 06. You know? So we be talking cones. Yeah. It's, it's a land of the understand. Wherever you go, you drive it and you see a no entry sign, you recognize it. Yeah. For the cones, for the parties, no matter what language. Yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> so I'm just one of the